History of Surgery Surgery is as old as humanity, for anyone who has ever staunched a wound has acted as a surgeon. In some ancient civilizations surgery reached a rather high level of development, as in India, China, Egypt, and Greece. In the New Stone Age, the Neolithic period, 4500 BC, our ancestors drilled holes into the skulls. Ancient surgeries such as these relied on turpentine and vinegar for infection control. For the patient, there was no anesthesia to ease the slicing of the scalp and bone. The history of dental and surgical procedures reaches back to the Neolithic and Preclassical ages. This procedure was practiced as early as 3000 BC. It continued through the Middle Ages and even into the Renaissance. The initial purpose of trephining in ancient cultures is unknown. Some hypothesize that it may have been used to rid the body of spirits. The practice was widespread throughout Europe, Africa, and South America. Evidence of healed skulls suggests some patients survived the procedure. Trephining continued in ancient Egypt as a method of treating migraines. In South America, ancient Mayans practiced dental surgery by filling cavities with precious stones. They included jadeite, turquoise, quartz, and hematite, among others. These procedures could have been for ritual or religious purposes, rather than health or cosmetic reasons. 6500 BCE, skulls found in France show signs of a rudimentary surgery called trepanation. 1750 BCE, the Code of Hammurabi, one of the earliest Babylonian codes of laws. It details regulation governing surgeons, medical malpractice, and victims' compensation. 1550 BCE, the Ebers Papyrus, an ancient Egyptian medical treaty. It includes information on how to surgically treat crocodile bites and serious burns. In Egypt, archaeologists and researchers have found ancient jawbones from Egypt's dynastic period. They had perforations that led them to believe that treatment of an abscess tooth occurred to drain the infection. These bones have been dated to around 2650 BCE. By 3000 BCE ancient Egyptians had developed their knowledge of human anatomy. They acquired it by removing organs in the mummification process. They treated wounds and abscesses with clamps, sutures and cauterization. They used tools like saws, forceps, scalpels and scissors. They also knew that honey helped to ward off infection. Papyrus Scrolls A great deal about surgeries in ancient Egypt has been found in ancient papyrus scrolls and on temple walls. Scholars and researchers believe that it was religious priests who performed surgeries. Researchers have also found that if infections happened after surgery, Egyptians treated them with honey. India, 600 BCE, Sushruta, is regarded as the founding father of surgery. He was an innovator of plastic surgery, including rhinoplasty. Human teeth contain a significant amount of mineralization and a dense crystalline structure. They provide some of the clearest evidence of surgery in ancient times. One of the earliest evidence of dental surgeries come from the Indus Valley, where civilization emerged around 3300 BCE. Indians too paved the way in the world of early surgery. Around 500 BC, reconstructive rhinoplasty was commonly practiced throughout India. It was done to reform noses cut off as punishment. The father of surgery, Sushruta, was performing surgeries between 1200 and 600 BCE. Surgery during this period involved examination, diagnosis, and treatment of a variety of illnesses. Cosmetic surgeries were performed, primarily with skin grafts and even reconstruction of a nose. The ancient Greeks dedicated temples to their god of medicine, Asclepius. These temples were where people went for medical advice and treatment. Meanwhile in ancient Greece, wounds were soaked in wine to prevent infection. The Greeks also used iron to create surgical instruments and could set broken bones and perform amputations. A few hundred years later, the legendary Roman doctor Galen treated the wounds of gladiators. He dissected animals to learn anatomy as human dissection was forbidden at the time. His writings influenced medicine for centuries to come. Galen, a Greek surgeon, was recorded to have performed eye, cataract, surgeries that resemble modern procedures. Surgeries such as the opening of abdominal abscesses to remove foreign material were reportedly performed. 
Researchers have also discovered the skeletal remains of ancient Greek men and women who had brain surgery. The remains of the patients show that the doctors who performed the surgeries were experienced and skilled. They were able to perform amputations and set bones, and they also soaked wounds in wine to prevent infection. Ancient Greeks also set broken bones, did bloodletting, draining lungs of patients with pneumonia, and amputations. The Greeks had new, iron tools at their disposal, yet the risk of infection or death was still high. Hippocrates Hippocrates is considered the father of Western medicine. Hippocrates' theory of four humors influenced medicine for hundreds of years. He claimed that four humors, black bile, yellow bile, phlegm, and blood exist in the body. They coincided with the elements earth, fire, water, and air, respectively. He taught that bloodletting, or the draining of blood, among other procedures, balanced them. Ancient Roman physician Galen was heavily influenced by the Greeks. He served for three years as doctor to Roman gladiators and as the emperor's surgeon, gaining hands-on surgical experience. Romans continued with trephining, amputations, and eye surgery. Beginning in 900 AD, Al-Zar Ali, a famous Islamic surgeon, wrote many books. He focused on orthopedics, military surgery, and ear, nose, and throat surgery. He made widespread influence among the Islamic and Western medical practitioners. Islam, 950, a Balkasis, an Arab physician was considered to be among the greatest medieval surgeons. He apparently had learned many of his skills from Greek surgeons. Doctors practicing during the Islamic Golden Age were also quite skilled with surgical procedures. Abu al-Qasim al-Zarawi, al discovered that it was possible to cure diseases by cauterization. Living in Muslim-controlled Andalusia, Spain, he had also invented specific surgical instruments. He used them to remove foreign objects from the air in the throat. Al-Zarawi treated warts, and likely to have performed the first mastectomy for the treatment of breast cancer. He had also treated head and spinal injuries surgically. He wrote out a clinical description of his surgical procedure to treat hydrocephalus. There he describes how he evacuated intracranial fluid from the brain. In Europe during the Middle Ages, the practice of surgery was not taught in most of the universities. Ignorant barbers instead wielded the knife, either on their own responsibility or upon being called by the physicians. The organization of the United Company of Barber Surgeons of London in 1540 brought some order. It marked the beginning of some control of the qualifications of those who performed operations. This guild was the precursor of the Royal College of Surgeons of England. The History of Surgery Middle Age and Medieval Times. For many years surgery and medicine changed very little, still dominated by the writings of Galen. Then the field experienced rapid advancement all at once. Barber Surgeon Throughout Europe in the Middle Ages emerged the Barber Surgeon. He was a craftsman who not only cut hair, but also pulled teeth, performed amputations, blood lead and set broken bones. Rows of rotten teeth hung in the windows of their shops. They were attached to the string the barber surgeon toiled over to pull from their sockets. Patients in this era were given urban alcohol mixtures. It was to reduce the excruciating pain of surgical procedures. Cauterization was used as a means of infection control. By the 1300s, the church allowed dissections of human bodies at medical schools. It was the beginning of a long and slow process of understanding the intricacies of the human body. During this era, women were allowed to be surgeons but not physicians. Surgeons were then seen as a lesser profession. Women continued to work as surgeons until they were pushed out in the 1700s with the emergence of medical schools. During 1400 and 1500s, Leonardo da Vinci dissected human bodies to create his anatomy sketches. Opium was used as a form of pain management. Even with the aid of alcohol and herbs, surgery remained horrifically barbaric. Surgery before anesthetics was simply brutal. Patients had to be restrained during operations and could easily die from blood loss or infection. Pain was so great they sometimes passed out. Most surgeons believed it was necessary to keep patients alert and awake, so alcohol and opiates were used sparingly. A new century brought the emergence of ligatures in 1500s in France. 
a devastating disease began to spread like wildfire, syphilis. This early strain of the disease was particularly devastating and deadly. Surgeons performed rhinoplasties out of skin grafts to remedy its telltale symptom. Saddle nose, in which the nose caved in and rotted away. These early skin grafts took agonizing weeks. Before the century's end, Andreas Vesalius published his groundbreaking work, The Fabric of the Human Body. It had accurate diagrams of human anatomy. They finally dispelled Galen's incorrect concepts that dominated the medical field for centuries. Chirurgia Magna 1363, French surgeon Guy de Chilliac writes Chirurgia Magna, Great Surgery. It was regarded as the standard text for surgeons until well into the 17th century. 1540, English barbers and surgeons unite to form the United Barber Surgeons Company. These barber surgeons perform tooth extractions and bloodletting. 1630, Wilhelm Fabry, is known as the father of German surgery. He is recognized as the first surgeon to employ amputation as a treatment for gangrene. The prospect of undergoing surgery before anesthesia and antiseptics was a horror-filled one for patients. Cutting into the body to alleviate sickness brought the possibility of infection or even death. Above all, it promised excruciating pain. It was before the widespread understanding that microorganisms caused illness and infection. Therefore little care was taken to cleanliness. To operate, doctors wore black, dirty overcoats stained with blood, pus, and matter from previous surgeries. The coats provided protection for the surgeons from getting a patient's bodily fluid on their clothes. But no precautions were taken for the sake of the patient. Doctors' instruments were also not kept clean. A patient would be strapped or held down on the operating table by heavy men. But, throughout the procedure, surgeons could hear and feel the patient's screams and thrashing. Surgeons traditionally administered opium, liquor, or mesmerism, hypnosis, to alter the patient's mind. As they had no other way to alleviate their pain in the body. These methods brought their own dangers, either a weak effect or death by overdose. In some cases, a tourniquet or ice was used to numb the area as much as possible. In any case, the patient had to decide how to handle the physical and mental trauma of watching their own operation. The Middle Ages and Renaissance In 1543 Andreas Vesalius encouraged human dissection for education. In 1543 Andreas Vesalius encouraged human dissection for education. Surgeons of the Middle Ages through the 18th century were often barber surgeons. They would travel and perform minor procedures including tooth extraction, bloodletting, and treat war wounds. Surgeons learned through apprenticeship and observation, as a blacksmith would. Anesthetics, Antiseptics Surgery, without adequate anesthetics and antiseptics, remained dangerous and was seen as a lesser profession. Some women performed surgical operations until the 1700s. Then the surgical study landed squarely within university training. Andreas Vesalius, was one of the founding fathers of modern surgery and a professor in Padua in the 16th century. He completely shifted how human anatomy was understood. Earlier much anatomical knowledge was based on animal dissection. When dissection of human cadavers was done, physicians observed while servants cut. Vesalius suggested hands-on approach of human dissection by physicians and surgeons. His study of human anatomy corrected Greek and Roman misconceptions based on dissection of animals. In 1543, he wrote the groundbreaking De Humani Corporis Fabrica Libri Septem. It became the most comprehensive anatomy text at the time and the basis for 200 years of anatomical study. 16th century French army surgeon Ambrose Perret also greatly influenced the development of surgery. Perret developed an emollient of egg yolk, rose oil, and turpentine for gunshot wounds. It was better than the previous practice of cauterizing, burning shut, wounds with boiling oil. Perret also brought the resurgence of ligating, or tying off, blood vessels. It was done during amputation to stop hemorrhage more effectively. While he made strides in the medical field, his motto was, I treated him. God cured him. It reflected the common medical perspective that doctors could only do so much. The History of Surgery, Modern Era 
By the 1700s, body snatchers flocked to cemeteries to obtain cadavers for dissection in medical schools. Medical students gathered in dissection theaters to learn human anatomy, suffering smell of rotting corpses. They had to shoo away pesky rats vying for a taste of the stinking, bloated cadavers. Surgeons were known for their speed, especially in amputations, as there was still no effective anesthetic. Unbelievably, the first appendectomy was performed in 1735, and it was surely a horrifically painful experience. But big changes in the medical field were on their way. Laughing gas was first used in 1799, though it still took many years before it was effectively applied to surgery. In the 18th century, with increasing knowledge of anatomy, such operative procedures as amputations of the extremities, excision of tumors on the surface of the body, and removal of stones from the urinary bladder had helped to firmly establish surgery in the medical curriculum. The earliest general anesthetic was developed in Japan in the early 1800s. Patients were rendered unconscious for anywhere from 6 to 24 hours. By the mid-1800s, ether and chloroform were being used as anesthetic, despite their numerous hazards. And by the 1850s Queen Victoria popularized the use of chloroform in childbirth. Later, even cocaine was used as a local anesthetic. Despite these medical advancements, surgeries remained risky ordeals. Patients were often sat upright and restrained with leather straps. It was to prevent them from bracing against the sharp slice of the surgeon's knife. Surgery took another leap forward with the advent of germ theory. Hand washing and sanitation improvements took place in the latter half of the 19th century. Surgeons began sterilizing surgical instruments, clothes and hands prior to surgery. Added to the mix were rubber gloves, first used in surgery in 1890. With these changes came improved patient outcomes, survival rates steadily climbed. Accurate anatomical knowledge enabled surgeons to operate more rapidly. Patients were sedated with opium or made to drink alcohol, and tied down. A leg amputation, for example, could then be done in 3-5 to five minutes. The pain involved in such procedures, however, continued to limit expansion of the field. The introduction of ether anesthesia took place in 1846. The number of operations thereafter increased markedly. It accentuated the frequency and severity of surgical infections. Based on historical records, many regard the 19th century as the birth of surgery. 1818, the first transfusion of human blood was performed. 1843, the first hysterectomy was performed in England. 1843, ether was used for the first time as an anesthetic. 1846, the first public use of ether as anesthesia was demonstrated. It was in a surgery performed at the Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston for the removal of a neck tumor. 1855, Mary Edwards Walker graduates from medical school and becomes the first female surgeon in America. 1867, British surgeon Joseph Lister publishes antiseptic principle in the practice of surgery. There he extolled the virtues of cleanliness in surgery. 1885, the first successful appendectomy was performed in Iowa. 1890s, carbolic acid was one of the first agents to be used as a microbicide. It disinfected surgical incisions and prevented postoperative infections. 1893, first successful heart surgery was performed at Provident Hospital in Chicago. It was to repair a defect in the lining of the heart, pericardium. Some do not regard this as heart surgery since the heart itself was not treated. 1895, the first X-ray was performed in Germany. 1896, first successful open-heart surgery was performed in Germany. It was to repair a stab wound in the muscle of the right ventricle. Wilhelm Conrad Röntgens discovered X-rays at the turn of the 20th century. It added an important diagnostic tool to surgery. The discovery of blood types in 1901 by Austrian biologist Karl Landsteiner made transfusion safer. New techniques of anesthesia involving new agents for inhalation were introduced. Regional anesthesia accomplished by nerve blocking, spinal and local anesthesia, was also found. The use of positive pressure and controlled respiration techniques was found. It prevented the lung from collapsing when the pleural cavity was open. It made the chest surgery practical and relatively safe for the first time. 
the intravenous administration, injection into the veins, of anesthetic agents was also adopted. In the period from the 1930s to the 1960s, the replenishment of body fluids by intravenous infusion was introduced. The introduction of chemicals and antibiotics to fight infection to treat the metabolically disturbed body, started. The development of heart-lung machines helped to bring surgery to a state of safety. Every body cavity, system, organ, and area could now be safely operated on. Contemporary surgical therapy is greatly helped by monitoring devices. They are being used during surgery and post-operative period. Blood pressure and pulse rate are monitored during an operation. A fall in the former and a rise in the latter could give evidence of a critical loss of blood. Other items monitored are the heart contractions as indicated by electrocardiograms. Tracings of brain waves are recorded by electroencephalograms. They reflect changes in brain function. Other things monitored are the oxygen level in arteries and veins, carbon dioxide partial pressure in the circulating blood, and respiratory volume and exchange. Intensive monitoring of the patient usually continues into the critical postoperative stage. A sepsis requires that all instruments and dry goods coming in contact with the surgical field be sterilized. The materials are put in an autoclave, which subjects its contents to a period of steam under pressure. Chemical sterilization of some instruments is also used. The patient's skin is sterilized by chemicals. Members of the surgical team scrub their hands and forearms with antiseptic or disinfectant soaps. Sterilized gowns, caps, and masks and sterilized gloves of disposable plastic complete the picture. Thereafter, avoiding contact with non-sterilized objects is the basis for maintaining a sepsis. The history of surgery, 20th century and beyond. With the dawn of the 20th century emerged Novocaine, but not everything was improving for the better. In 1936 Walter Freeman performed his first lobotomy in the U.S. He went on to provide lobotomies to over 2,500 patients throughout his career. Fortunately, by the 1940s patients could breathe a sigh of relief. Blood transfusions, antibiotics and penicillin finally made surgery relatively safe. And with these advancements surgery took leaps and bounds. The first successful kidney transplant was performed in 1953. Five short years later, surgeons successfully reattached the severed arm. Laser eye surgery, heart transplants and cochlear implants allowing the deaf to hear were done. An infant even received a heart transplant from a baboon. Surgeons today are performing full face transplants. They're using minimally invasive laser surgery to treat brain cancer. They're even transplanting entire limbs, things our ancestors could have only dreamed of. Mankind has come a long way in the brutal and archaic history of surgery. Medical sciences advancements aren't slowing down anytime soon. Today, we live in an era of advanced medicine. An entire array of healthcare professionals and specialists are at our disposal.